I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 156, F1 World Grand Prix 2. Released exclusively in Europe and Australia, this game was developed by Paradigm Entertainment and published by Video System. So soon after Taz Express, we've got another game not available in Japan or North America. There's a very small number of these on the system, so it's kind of wild we got two so close together. Because this is a PAL region game, it normally runs at 50Hz, and the EverDrive is forcing it to run on my console. So any weird frame rate or graphical issues may be due to that. Anyway, we played the first game in this series relatively recently at game 130. I'm personally just not really a fan of F1, but hey, I said I mean all of them. Let's get into it. The main single player mode in this game is the Grand Prix, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. Choosing who to drive as was a no-brainer. The greatest ever Michael Schumacher driving for Ferrari. Well, I don't know much about F1, but I'm told he was pretty good. The first race was at Australia. Man, there's so many things to do for these races. There's the Friday practice, Saturday practice, qualifier, warm-up, and the actual race. Thankfully, you don't have to do any of that other stuff, although qualifying is a good idea. After choosing qualify, I had to choose all my car settings. Just like the last game, it's quite confusing what all this stuff does. They did update the UI to give it a green and black look, and I think this one looks nicer. The bars show you generally how the car will perform based on your adjustments, but it's still not super straightforward. Driving in these games is so hard. The skill level was on rookie by default, but it's still a struggle. I know by now I'm supposed to brake coming into the turn then accelerate out of it. I don't know, it's just tough. There is a dark racing line to show you the optimal path to take on each track. When you do a qualifier you have 12 attempts to get your best time. On my 7th go I had the course learned decently and was able to stay mostly on the track. Not to mention the motivation from the advertisements from my favorite brands like Coca-Cola and Shell Oil plastered all over the place. This time around I qualified in third place and that was definitely good enough for me. Now it was time for the actual race. Man, it is so loud with all these engines roaring right next to each other. Can't even imagine how it would sound in real life. Also, if you don't wait until the horn goes off, you will definitely spin out at the start. Right away on the first lap, the mysterious driver Williams from the last game just spun out for no reason. I thought these guys were supposed to be pros. Oh shoot, I was neck and neck with Mika Hakkinen, and I ultimately took the lead. Okay, if you can't tell already, the settings for these races aren't exactly realistic. By default, there's no damage to the vehicles, and the difficulty was on Rookie, which just makes driving a little simpler. I usually stick with the default settings unless I really enjoy the game and want to make it a bit harder or something like that. The one setting I did change was the amount of laps. Normally this Australian Grand Prix is 58 laps which just takes ages. I lowered it to the minimum which is 4 for this particular race. I think this is the most enjoyable way to play the game for myself. I'm sure others would like the simulation aspect of driving for a couple hours straight, but not me. I wound up winning this race quite handedly, and the celebration cutscene is certainly interesting. They got kind of mainstream success. Jesus. <laughs> what is so loud? Dude, why are there so many air horns there? It sounds awful. Plus, what is that spinning thing that popped up? The mirror shield from Ocarina of Time? Anyway, the next race was Interlagos, Brazil. Right away into the qualifier, I slammed into the wall. Yeah, that's probably not going to be a good lap. It was clear the turns here were a bit tighter than the last one. I just couldn't quit blasting those tires. To my surprise, this was good enough to qualify in 7th place. No idea how, but hey, I'll take it. Now in the real race, somehow Schumacher did a flip on the Shell logo. Man, they really used to build these cars to last. The biggest feature of this track are the Senna S-turns. It's quite difficult to take these well without losing position. Michael Schumacher isn't afraid to get a bit rough to pass people though. I'm all about winning. I took first place here as well. You get points based on where you finish with 10 for first place. 
so I now had 20 total points, quite a good start. Whoever has the most at the end of the season wins. I guess that thing I got last race was a trophy because this time it actually looks like one. The third race is the legendary Autodromo Juan y Oscar Galvez in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The biggest feature on this course is a wide turn, which is quite challenging to take. I opted for the shortcut through the grass to make it easier and save a bit of time. I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and music. The graphics are honestly fantastic. They were very good in the last one, so it's no surprise. The frame rate looks a bit odd, but that's because it's a PAL region game. It mostly seems to run smoothly except in rare occasions when a lot of cars are piled up together. During a race, there isn't any music, just the sounds of you and the other engines roaring and tires screeching. You do have a racing coach who talks to you sometimes, but he mostly just repeats a very small set of lines. It's a bit lacking in my opinion. I took first place here and I think a pattern is starting to form. Next up is the Grand Prix of San Marino in Imola. This track starts off crazy with the Tosa hairpin immediately into the Piratella in Ake Minerale corners. The best part is the shortcut they built through the grass here. Like it would be so slow to go through that incredibly tight turn. It just makes more sense to go through the grass, you know? I was doing well here, but uh, I had quite the violent crash. Oh shoot, man, this car is really strong. It turns out not all shortcuts are the same difficulty. Couple mishaps here and there, I took fifth on this one. No problem, I don't need first on every race anyway. The fifth race is in Barcelona, Spain. It's got several memorable features like the Reynault corner, the turn La Caixa, and of course the chicane. Unfortunately, no shortcuts this time around. I got second on this one and my arch rival Hakkinen was just too good this time. The sixth race is everyone's favorite, Monaco in Monte Carlo. On my qualifying lap, I kinda screwed up and I couldn't figure out how the heck to go in reverse. Okay, maybe I screwed up a few times. It's a tough track to drive, alright? I think the reason people love this race so much is just how many opportunities there are to overtake. It's one of the places you'll see the most passing. Seriously though, this track is so strange to me. It's just in the middle of the city. Like, do they just shut down everything for the race? Yeah, sorry I'm late boss, F1 race ruined my commute. Some of the turns are quite tight, but luckily there's bumpers to assist you. I got first place after my dominant performance. The seventh race is the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. What's up with these signs saying moose fly? No they don't. Moose? Meese? Mooses? Eh, I don't know. I also love that giant sign that just says casino. Are they advertising a particular one or just like bringing awareness that it casinos exist? The course ends here with the wall of champions. I wound up getting fourth place, eh, good enough. After that it was on the Magni Corps, France. This track was retired in 2008 so we're getting a blast from the past. The real F1 fans can appreciate this one. The hardest part was a hairpin turn right before the lap ended. Felt like I had to come to a complete stop to even hit it decently. You know, there was one part I may have gotten just a little out of control. Can't have a perfect lap every time. For the observant, you may notice the playtime jumped up but I was still on lap 1. The game allows you to retry any race without a penalty, which is nice. I should have gotten first here but I choked at the end. Come back? No, the throw! I still got second. Oh well, second's pretty good too. Then it was the Silverstone Circuit in Northamptonshire, England. There's plenty of iconic sections like the Abbey, the Wellington Strait, and the Stow. I took first place here, wasn't too much trouble. Then it was to Austria for the A1 ring. Nowadays it's the Red Bull ring. This was the easiest track for me to drive on by far. There's barely any turns and it's mostly straights. Just crank that baby up to max speed and go for it. An easy first place finish for the Goat Schumacher. Then it was time for Hockenheim, Germany. Yeah, I found a decent shortcut here, and I did a sick 360 stunt bonus along with it. Just making sure Hakkinen knows he'll never be as good as I am. Maybe I shouldn't have showed off so much though as I got third place. Then we were on to the Hungaroring in Budapest, Hungary. 
It's got many tricky obstacles like the elf corner, the Pirelli, and even the Arpad corner. I got first place here quite easily. After that is the Belgium race at Spa Franker Champs. So anyway, I qualified in second place after my fantastic lap. Where do I go? You're in second position now. Good enough. This ending is called the bus stop, and it certainly put a stop to my car there. I found an amazing shortcut at one of the turns by cutting through this pedestrian footpath. It just makes sense way more than taking that slow wide turn, you know? I took second here and I'd all but secured the season win, but there were still a bit more races to go. The circuit takes us to the Autodromo Nazionale Monza in Italy. It starts with the Retifilo, which I mastered by minimizing my time in the grass and dirt. Perfection. This was one of the easiest races so far. First place by a landslide. Then it was on to the Nürburgring in Luxembourg. Although apparently these F1 games are being weird about that because that track is in Germany, as you all have pointed out to me in the previous game's comments. Finally, it was time for the last race, the Suzuka International Raceway in Japan. It got a bit heated in the last days of the season. Hakkinen was jealous of my success, obviously. I got second place and that was the end of the Grand Prix. It shows a cutscene with the top three drivers on a podium and Schumacher's holding a rather large trophy with one hand. Also, apparently he made $5.8 million in 1998. Not that bad. The racers all pop champagne bottles and spray them around, then the credits play. So there's a couple more things for this game. By going to Driver Williams and changing his name to Nostalgia, you unlock a secret track to race on. This is the Jerez de la Frontera in Spain. Okay, I was annoyed when I drove here. There was a dang mini-map in the corner. Why couldn't I have had that for the Grand Prix mode? It would be so nice. This track has several tight hairpin turns and many long straights. I'm assuming based on the cheat name that fans of F1 have fond memories of this place. I've never heard of it though. Cool that they threw it in. I think it's not as cool as the Hawaii track in the last one. Oh, if you're wondering what it looks like to go into pit road, I did that here. Uh, I think we're going into the pit. Oh, nope, we're good. No change is needed. Oh my god, it's Deadpool. Why is that? Is that a chair? Uh, yeah, that was a weird experience. Do they hold that brake sign in front of them in the real thing? The other thing is the challenge mode. Many of you pointed out I missed this in the first entry of the series, so I decided to take a look at it here. Apparently people who love this game spend a lot of time in this. There are three types of challenges in speed, tactics, and mechanical. They get progressively harder and you have a skill meter. Hey, I won the Grand Prix, why isn't my skill maxed out? I decided I'd do one challenge from each category to show it off a bit. I picked the first speed challenge and a description of what I had to do popped up. These are apparently based on real scenarios from actual F1 races. In this one, Hakkinen and Coulter had gotten out to an early lead in the first race. Although on lap 36, Hakkinen went to the pit due to a mistake from his communication crew. His teammate Coulter took the lead. My job was to start from the pit and try to catch up to him and take the win. So there are three laps to go in the 56 lap race, and I feel there's a plot hole here. If Hakkinen and Coulter are teammates and the team wants Hakkinen to win, why doesn't Coulter just slow down to let me pass him? Why risk making him finish first instead of me? I don't get it. This was a little tough, but not too bad. Probably because it's the first one. On my fourth try, I passed him and made sure to give him a little love tap. You know, just cause we're teammates. It was easy to win from here. It said I got three points, then I saw where it said to overlap the remaining cars to score even higher. What the heck man, it's not good enough to just win? You got a super win. For the first tactics challenge, you play as Irvine from Team Ferrari. Schumacher is in first place as expected, and you want to maintain your second place position to prevent Hakkinen from Team McLaren from catching up. This one is real easy. I think you get more points based on how many seconds ahead Schumacher finishes. I got 5, which is the max. For the first mechanical challenge, you're playing as Coulter, who has raced nearly perfectly so far. He has a large lead over Schumacher in second place. 
Unfortunately, Coulter's gearbox overheated and he has his top speed limited. He didn't have time to go to the pit, so he just had to finish the race without overheating the engine for the last three laps. Yeah, so on my first attempt, I was just flooring it the entire time, and obviously that didn't work. The engine blew and I got kicked out. All in all, this one's not too hard either, though. Just don't accelerate as often as you're used to. And yeah, there's 15 challenges in total, and I could see how getting a perfect score on all of them would really require mastery of the game. I'll save that for a 100% run that I'll totally do at some point. But yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating F1 World Grand Prix 2. I definitely feel like F1 is much more popular in Europe than here in North America, so it's not too surprising we never received this game. From what it seems, this game is basically the same as the last other than a few UI changes and an updated racing roster. It doesn't even feel like the physics changed. I mean, the last one wasn't bad, so they didn't really need to change it. But does it justify buying a completely different game if you already had the last one? But yeah, I'm just not super into F1 racing, or most realistic racing games in general. I can see the appeal of wanting to feel like you're really there, and I'm sure this game achieved that back in the day. Nowadays, there are plenty of better options. I suppose if you did want to experience a simulation racer on the N64, this would be the superior version. The game being limited to PAL only might make it hard for some people though. Overall, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed that there's a more silly way to play the game if you want. I gave it a 4.5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 3 out of 10 for difficulty. Alright, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We had a randomized marble race to determine which game was next, so here's how that played out. Or skip to the timestamp on screen to skip straight to the game selection. Uh, we'll do a simulation. There are currently 235 games on the list. Let's see what happens. And the marbles are off. War Gods off to an early lead, it appears, as well as F1 Racing Championship. That would be a shame. Getting launched up these elevators now, and we're going to get launched, and somebody is signed into Steam. F1 Racing Championship getting a big bounce, and Mischief Makers falls off the cliff. It will not be Mischief Makers, folks. Let's see what's happening. Morita, oh no, it's Shogi in the lead. That would be an absolute travesty. Worms Armageddon, Goemon, 40 Winks as well, our only non-licensed game on the list. V-Rally Edition falls, so many games, Pachinko, Tetrisphere, International Superstar, and Quake 2 appears to be slightly in the lead on the left side. We got Shogi as well, bouncing again. And let's see, the Japanese game falls off the cliff, and it's Shogi battling for the lead with Goemon and Worms Armageddon. It's hard to tell what it's going to be, and it appears there's one final mix-up here. It's Shogi in the lead, another Japanese game, and... Oh! In insane! What a finish! It appears Supercross 2000 snuck through and somehow won the race! Unbelievable, folks. I thought for sure we were playing Shogi, but it appears Supercross 2000 somehow, some way, took the win. Shogi would have been horrible to play. Ah, uh, so Supercross 2000 it is. But yeah, if you're still here watching, you're awesome. Thank you so much. If you had a good time, consider hitting that like button, or maybe even dropping a subscription. Or hey, maybe even watch another one of these videos that's on screen now. And yeah, see you next time.